Hi, I'm Alex, and I'm here to tell my story about my spinal CSF leak. The first symptoms of my spinal CSF leak included terrible, terrible headaches the morning after uh, what I probably realized was the, the, uh, the event that caused it. So after the softball game, I had, uh, I had a sore rotator cuff. And I was thinking the rotator cuff was causing the muscles in my back to cause tension headaches. So I didn't think anything about the headaches for a couple of weeks. This calmed down, but then I still had the headaches. And at that point, I realized I needed to go see a doctor about my head because the pain was very significant and uh, uh, it should have calmed down by now. Was able to go and see a uh, local neurologist who was able to give me some initial thoughts. Those thoughts were, well, it could be a tumor, it could be some sort of aneurysm, or you might just have a CSF leak. And I got an initial uh, CSF pressure check, and indeed my pressure was really low. So we did uh, have a, a very good idea that it was a CSF leak, CSF leak, but now we needed to find out where it was. There's the bad part. It was that even after numerous MRIs, numerous imaging, uh, uh, we weren't able to initially identify where the CSF leak was, well then that led to really simply then starting, you know, a couple, two and a half, three years of really just focusing then on treating the symptoms. The impact of these symptoms of my, on my work and family life were, were um, can't be understated because I was, I was really unable to perform at my job at the level of which I, I'm accustomed to and, and uh, am expected to. Uh, furthermore, at, at home, I wasn't able to be a father and a husband, uh, given the fact that I felt lousy most of the time. Three years in, I realized that I needed to make finding a solution to my medical problem a priority in my life. The, the initial consultation, uh, I will never forget. It was one of those moments when you meet a professional, when you realize you're really talking to the right person. Uh, this professional was immediately able to understand what I was going through and immediately upon, you know, a car conversation was able to help me understand where I needed to go from there. So after three and a half years, my CSF leak is affirmatively diagnosed and so the next step is, is to find a surgeon who can repair the leak. And what was interesting was, is that as bright as the physicians were at identifying a leak, finding a surgeon wasn't easy. As it turns out, my affirmative diagnosis, uh, they suspected it could have been in a couple different spots. But when I went to go see my surgeon, he went ahead and had me do his set of imaging, which was a little different, and it's called digital subtraction myelogram. And what it does is it runs you through an imaging machine very, very slowly to get high-res images. And it was able to actually affirm that my leak was in my back and not my neck, which was great because I was able to, I was able to avoid neck surgery uh, in an exploratory way. So that saved me lots of time and lots of trouble. The surgery itself was was uh, was not that bad and on a relative basis. The transition from the rebound endocranial headaches, the procedure, but to work in family life has been something that that has been something I've really enjoyed. But it's been tough, and um, I've been accustomed to being very active in my work in my in my uh, family life, and and so. Uh, it's been about a year out since the procedure, and so I'm still probably not all there, but, but I've been held back for so long that, again, I'm very eager to get back to my, my old life, or at least something close to it. I would encourage the neurology community to, to, to work a little harder to, to identify uh, CSF leaks for folks that have chronic headache pain. Um, for a very long time, for three years, my neurologist, who's a smart guy and a decent guy, I'm sure, but he kept treating me for migraines, which migraines are not my problem. <laughs>